Hello class, this is lesson 5-3 titled Scatter Plots and Lines of Fit. And in this lesson, we're talking about data points that you might be collecting. And it's possible that those points do not completely line up exactly. And so what we're going to start with is by variate data, this consists of pairs of values. And if you were going to plot these on a graph, you would typically get what's called a scatter plot. This is a graph of your bivariate data. And a specific point that you might see is what's called an outlier. And this is a point that is going to be outside of your cluster points. So hopefully the points that you're graphing are kind of clustering together. For instance, do you see all these pink points right here? They're all kind of clustering toward the middle and they're moving upward. And if I was going to classify this, I would say that these points represent a positive correlation. Because as you can see, as the x value increases, the y value also increases. Whereas I might have a collection of points from my data. Again, they're all random. But in this instance, I would say that they have a negative correlation. Do you see how they're all going downward? So I could say as x increases, the y values instead are decreasing. And then it's also possible that the data that you collect really is just kind of random. There's no correlation between any of those points. Now an outlier would be a point, again, that is outside of the cluster points. So for instance, this point right here would be considered an outlier from my data. Now we're going to talk about a line of fit. This is where we see that our data has some sort of trend or correlation. And so we would draw a line that is going to fit our data. This line is going to be close to our scatter points as closely as we can get it. And so when you do this, you want to draw a line along the data that has basically the same amount of values above and below your line. If there's no correlation, then there would be no line of fit. In my example, it says the table shows the average cost of a boat starting in the year 2000. Make a scatter plot and draw a line of fit, and then write an equation to represent your data. So if you're recording this in your notebook, I know you might need to pause it and copy this down, but I'm going to label my graph the average cost of boats in the U.S., my x-axis is going to be the years since 2000, and I'm going to count by twos on mine. And then the left-hand side is going to be the cost in dollars. And I'm going to count by 5,000. So I have my 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000. I'm just skipping lines. And now I can go ahead and plot all of my points. Notice that I do not have a value for the year five, which is 2005, so I'm going to skip that. And yours might go a little bit slower than mine. Just kind of speeding this up a little bit for you guys. And 13, there we go. So now I have my points, and my next step is to draw a line that I think flows just along those points. And it might take you several lines until you come up with one that you really like, where you have the same amount of values above the line and below the line. So that is my line of fit. Now you're going to take two points that you went through. So I'm going to pick 4,23,280 and 7,27,784. And I'm going to use those to find the slope of my line. And so like you've done in the past, you're going to subtract your y values on top and your x values on the bottom. And I'm doing this a little quickly, but when I do this, I'm going to get a decimal that continues on. So let's round to the nearest tenth, 1,501.3. So now that I have my slope, I'm going to pick one of my points to plug into my slope intercept form with this slope to find the y-intercept. 
And when I do all these calculations, I get 17,274.8. So my final equation for my line of fit is y equals 1,501.3x plus 17,274.8. So that's my equation. Now I have something else for us to do based on this problem. We're going to use our equation, and I'll write it down again, to predict the cost of the boat in that year, 2005, that's the year that was skipped, but then also way in the future at 2025. So that represents x at 5 and x at 25. And so I'm just going to plug the x value in. So let's figure that out at the year 2005. Let's see, when I multiply, I get 7,506.5 added to the 17,274.8 for a grand total of $24,781.30 in the year 2005. So now we're going to repeat this process for the value of 25. And when I plug that in and multiply, I get 37,532.5 added to my 17,274.8 for a grand total of $54,807.30 in the year 2025. And I'm done. So what I'd like you to do now is to try one problem on your own. The data here shows the amount of milk a baby goat needs for its weight. You're going to make a scatter plot, draw a line of fit, write an equation of the line, and predict the amount of milk needed for a 17-pound and a 55-pound goat. And that's it. So try this out. I'll see you in class.